So now we will begin the afternoon presentations with Mr. Alexander Sarai, who will present artificial intelligence included in Ludo evaluation. Alexander Sarai holds a master's degree in teaching English as a second language from the Universidad UNIM, Puerto Rico, as well as a Bachelor of Education in English from the Universidad Pedagógica Nacional from Bogotá, Colombia. He is currently the head of the English department, Universidad ESI, Colombia. So please let us welcome Mr. Sarai. Well, first of all, thanks for the introduction. Can you hear me well? Yes, I hear you perfectly. Great. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. On behalf of my fellow colleague, Cristina Montero, she cannot make it today because she's, you know, she's on top of the department. She's uh, dealing with certain administrative uh, situations, but uh, I hope um, on the one hand you like the presentation and uh, everything uh, fits and, and like you know stands up to the to the expectations you have. Everything will be great. Can you see my screen now? Um, not yet. I'm sharing PowerPoint. We do now. Oh, PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah, it is artificial intelligence included in Ludo evaluation. Perfect. So mm -hmm. uh, first of all, welcome everybody. Uh, what I'll try to do is to walk you through artificial intelligence. I know you've been. Uh, you might be overwhelmed a bit with artificial intelligence, everything. I'll try to, to give a different perspective. Uh, and uh, I will just try to walk you through uh, different uh, views on artificial intelligence. First, we're going to see the objectives. We're going to discuss or talk about artificial intelligences in educational settings. We are going to share ideas on how to connect artificial intelligences and assessment, uh, which is something that, that we've been uh, doing at the university and it has worked effectively. And we're going to describe the challenges of artificial intelligences in education. That's, those are our three objectives. So uh, I have planned a Mentimeter, but I don't know, uh, I guess we can, uh, due to time constraints, we I can give you the link and you can work on that. It's just uh, for you to, to give us some insights and short answers on, on your expectations regarding artificial intelligence, your concepts, opinions, etc. cetera. Uh, here's the link. I'll be showing the link back and forth, but I think I'm not going to enable the tool so far because I want to make sure uh, like the, the content, or, or I want to prioritize the content. Though uh, the presentation is already open, you can, uh, if you enter or if you access the link through the QR code, uh, you might be able to uh, to start checking the questions and, and everything we've been you know asking or that we prepared so the first question that we have uh, that we are not going to go through that much is what do we understand as artificial intelligence and for that we have some key concepts artificial intelligence refers to the development of computer systems that can perform tasks that typically require human intelligence. And I want to connect that to Mr. Caicedo's previous presentation. Um, this at some point at the very beginning, we might think it jeopardizes our jobs as teachers. Yes and no. And I'm going to elaborate on that a little bit later on through the presentation. But but I, I just want to make sure that we are uh, we're going to follow this concept of artificial intelligence. This definition refers to the development of computer systems that perform a task imitating human intelligence. And artificial intelligences can be categorized into two types. Narrow, that are designed for very specific tasks, and general, that are the ones that possess human-level intelligence. Uh, they are capable of understanding and performing any intellectual task. And I want to highlight that because this is pretty much our thread or the thread we have is like are we going to be replaced by artificial intelligence how would that work etc not not really uh but we do need to be prepared uh because the the upcoming uh, technology is going to be a little bit much more invasive and, uh, and much more prepared than what we have now so intelligence uh 
it encompasses a wide range of techniques and approaches. I'm gonna explain one by one. We're talking about machine learning and machine learning is uh, the set of algorithms that the machine uses to learn something. And I want to go back a little bit and give a little definition uh, of the record definition of, of what an algorithm is. I know most of you are, like might be familiarized with the definition, but what I do to explain what I use or the figure I use to explain my students what an algorithm is, is the example of a recipe, a sandwich recipe. We have the ingredients, we have bread, we have lettuce, tomato, whatever you want to put on sandwich, if you're a vegan, you can put anything else, uh, or you know, beef, etc. And then the step by step. That step by step is pretty much the algorithm with a little difference when we talk about machine learning. Machine learning has the two possibilities. If something says yes, it traces a path. If something says no, it traces a path. If something says, I don't know, maybe, perhaps, traces some other paths. And based on that, it constructs and it learns. That's why machine learning happens to be very important. Uh, I highlighted this, natural language processing, which is pretty much what ChatGPT does. It gets a prompts of natural language given or delivered by human. Uh, and based on that, it constructs uh, a corpora, a sort of like corpora that it uses whenever he, uh, ChatGPT or it uses whenever ChatGPT is prompt or asked something very specific. Then we have computer vision. Another uh, interesting aspect of artificial intelligence is the capacity it has to elaborate on visual things. Um, probably you might have seen these pictures or these uh, paints created by artificial intelligence, uh, replicating uh, famous people or famous scenes in very specific situations. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to use this in the classroom. Then we talk about expert systems, and this is where it, was, where it gets crazy. Because when we talk about expert systems, we talk about uh, the capacity of artificial intelligence to judge. And this is something that people have taken for granted. Like, no, they cannot do that. Artificial intelligences cannot judge. They cannot feel, etc. Uh, a, a, a branch of artificial intelligence that, are, that is the expert system is being designed to judge as a human would do. And that implies that it poses certain uh, ethical and philosophical challenges. To what extent does it make smart decisions or does it make good or bad decisions based on what we understand on good or bad issues, you know? Something that hasn't been, been totally, you know, we don't agree on, on a concept for good or bad, but expert systems are trying to approach the knowledge of, of machine learning, including that component, the ethical component. I don't know how it will go in the future, but uh, that, that's something that that's, uh, I have to admit, it freaks me out a little bit. And then we have robotics, that is the design of hardware that uh, replicates real life, uh, real life like uh, uh, devices. You know, you have, some of you might have at home this uh, robot vacuum cleaner. This goes around, cleans, etc. Like it, it vacuums and dusts. Uh, that's an example of robotics. You don't have to 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 tell the robot where it where it has to go. It just goes by quotation mark instinct, which is promotion algorithm based on the space of your house. Um, and for this, there's something that I want to mention is the fact that. We need to be super careful about this because every single device we interact with has access to our information. In the very specific in the specific case of the vacuum cleaner, believe it or not, it starts measuring your house. It cleans your living room, your room, your kitchen, etc. And it starts sending information. So whenever you get advertising uh, uh, or these advertisements on cleaning or whatever or furniture it has already taken your information so it knows what kind of furniture you need based on the information that the vacuum has sent sounds crazy it does it happens it also happens yeah it does happen okay now 
to, to avoid these challenges, we need to equip our students with certain tools, skills. So for the skills in here, we have the four C's, learning and innovation. You know, the four C's, critical thinking and problem solving, something we have been doing in our classrooms. I'm positively sure uh, everyone attending this conference, uh, like active titles, you know, we, we talk about critical thinking and problem solving. We post problems so our students go over those problems and with the critical thinking tools, they overcome and find solutions. Creativity and innovation, something that we need to work on, fostering these specific skills. That they are creative, not only do they have the ability to come up with something new, but like adapted or uh, necessary for their communities. Innovating at some point, like something that we, we you know, the M plus one crash and would say, now this is the moment in which we need to start equipping our students with that plus one. We don't give the M plus one, we give the M. Students get the plus one now. We talk about communication fundamental and collaboration fundamental for uh, for teachers and students. And this part of collaboration and communication is pretty much my lifesaver when I say I, I won't be replaced by a machine. Because language is a, a social act. And probably a machine has something, you know, like perfection language, etc. But it won't give students that sense of interaction that their peers or the teacher gives. This is when I feel safe and say, probably I won't be replaced by a machine. Digital literacy, and this is something quintessential when we talk about artificial intelligences. We need information literacy. We need to be able to understand whether or not we believe or trust or rely on a source. Uh, we cannot believe everything we see on the internet like you know those whatsapp memes or threats that they send we don't believe in that or we might be very critical whenever we receive those pieces of information media literacy you know mass media now uh, is at some point and i don't want to get into a political debate but mass media is you know pulled behind by, pulled behind by certain powers Regardless the orientation, the political orientation you have, we need to know that every discourse is mediated by an intention. And the literacy we need to, to equip our students with uh, on media literacy refers to the fact that they might understand everything, they comprehend, but they will not believe in everything they hear or listen or see, whatever now. They just need to be very critical on that. And finally, ICT literacy is the way we use every technological device we interact with. From cell phones, computers, uh, video game consoles, Alexa, and, and all those assistants, uh, we need to know how to use them. Uh, I mean, like, it sounds crazy, but I've met people who don't take pictures with their smartphones because they don't have uh, cash on their accounts. They say, no, I need to have, like, funding accounts to take a picture, not really. And to the point that, that we need to be totally literate, that we need to train our students and our community, not only students, but also parents, fellow teachers, uh, administrative staff, you know, like uh, principals, etc. We need to train them on how to use a computer, a tablet, a cell phone in a proper way and, and make the most out of it pretty much. The last set of skills I want to talk about here are career and life. And it's something that some other uh, people have called soft skills. And we talk about flexibility and adaptability, initiative and self-direction, social and cross-cultural interaction. This is important for artificial intelligence. Productivity and also important accountability. You need to be accountable for uh, everything you do even if you're taken, if you have taken things from ChatGPT or whatever tool, you need to be accountable and you need to verify. As Mr. Kaiseda mentioned in the previous uh, lecture, we don't trust everything artificial intelligences give us. So we need to be very, very critical about it and we need to be accountable for what we display uh, to our students. Leadership to transmit these skills and responsibility to understand that not only are we forming language learners, but we are dealing with human beings. And in this 
uh, over-elaborate the technological society, we need to equip our students with this, uh, like leadership, responsibility, all these uh, soft skills. So to, to wrap up like with this, learning and innovation, the four C's, digital literacy and career and life. This is something we really, really need to focus on. Uh, those are the P21 skills, 20, 21st century skills. Okay, now to move on, uh, what we're going to talk about now is load evaluation, pretty much, you know, probably this is new, the, the term is new, because this is the way I, I have learned working on different projects with the Minister of Education and the, uh, the Secretary of Education here in Bogota, Colombia. And this is the, the word they coined. Legal evaluation typically refers to an evaluation or assessment of a person uh, in a gamified classroom. And uh, we get feedback from gamification, etc. Like when a, when a classroom is gamified, we get some results, we get some input. And uh, what to do with that, you know, because sometimes we use Kahoot or we use uh, Class Dojo or we use like the, the, a great deal of tools, but we just get the results and that's about it. So the idea is to go a little bit beyond that. Also, uh, platforms, learning platforms, LMSs, you know, Oxford has one, Cambridge has one, Pearson has one. And I'm sorry if I am forgetting uh, engaged learning, etc. You know, I apologize if I am forgetting any other, any other publishing house, but I know many of the publishing houses that create uh, material do come with LMSs. And they, got, they give us a plain analysis of the results of our students. Now, what we need to do is to go a little bit beyond and with the use of uh, artificial intelligence, make some product to, to put those results into practice in our classroom. Artificial intelligence in education, speaking of like the very specific matter of our lecture today, refers to the integration of artificial intelligence technologies and techniques to enhance that technology, uh, teaching and, and learning experiences. How to do so? Get to know your population. We need to get to know our people. If we're uh, working with elementary school, middle school, high school, university students, whatever the level is, uh, we need to uh, something I suggest at the very beginning, try to run a survey to see how familiarized our students are with technology and with artificial intelligence. So we, we measure how much of input we can provide them uh, and, and to, to make a much more meaningful experience out of this. Artificial intelligence can be utilized to develop intelligent Turing systems. And, and I mean, color me surprised, but it happens. Uh, if we know how to use chat, GPT, and some more tools I'm gonna show you, uh, it can provide personalized and adaptive learning experiences. It's like something more tailor-made. And it's something that at some point teachers struggle with. You know, we have 20 students and every student has a different need or a different set of needs. And we need to work on, you know, every individual. And artificial intelligence, if, if well used, can give us a huge hand on that. Mm -hmm. When I say huge hands, because it has happened to me, and I have uh, done very successful successful experiences with this. Um, now, these educational platforms can analyze student data and provide insights to teachers. You know, when you have the report from an LMS, in my experience is pretty much with Cambridge LMS. Uh, you identify did you identify areas in which students might need to work a little bit more, or they need additional intervention. LMSs are fundamental. The problem is that we just have the plain data. And so Alexander said, I, he has really good grammar, like he needs to work on vocabulary or, or lexical resources, etc. This is uh, what we need to work on and artificial intelligence is gonna help us move forward, not only to tell the person, hey, you need to work on vocabulary, no. Tell them how to work on vocabulary. And, and, and this is pretty, Pretty fascinating because I was listening then again and I quote Mr. Quesedo. He was showing us some examples of vocabulary for the for the, the standardized the standardized tests, and it's pretty much that like you know use Chat GPT or whatever uh, chat uh, chatbot to help our students 
maximize their vocabulary opportunities, their grammar opportunities. Uh, that's the idea, you know, like we collaborate with artificial intelligence and on the one hand, we don't rely on that. Like we, we become just uh, totally blind to the, the benefits. But, but also, on the other hand, we are not or we do not feel um, terrified or uh, like, I don't know, probably uh, intimidated by the use of artificial intelligences and it's going to be my substitute or whatever. No, it's a tool. I mean, it's a machine. It's not going to be a threat. It's going to be a tool to help us. And I want to highlight that. Um, I cannot stress how much this is relevant for teachers to know. Uh, I have mentioned before natural language processing, NLP, and speech recognition, te recognition technologies can be employed to create intelligent virtual assistants or chatbots, you know, like ChatGPT. And there are some more beautiful chat voices, uh, chat, uh, chatbots with voice recognition that can assist students in answering questions, providing explanations, or delivering personalized feedback. I remember once I was working with some students on uh, discourse analysis, and I asked them with different prompts to go to ChatGPT and ask, what is discourse analysis? And every single student had a different answer because the input was different. And well, not only did I use ChatGPT, I, I used some other uh, chatbots. So I wanted to, to gather like different uh, pieces of information. And we didn't rely on artificial intelligence. We created a collective definition of what discourse analysis was. Of course, we used artificial intelligence and, and the corpora and everything, but we created our own. So I didn't take that as, as my enemy. I used that as what it is, too. Um, I was talking about algorithms you know, the path. And they can analyze large volumes of educational content. Uh, identify patterns, which is extremely fundamental, and trends. And when we talk about trends, I think this is extremely necessary to mention, like the tendencies our students are going for. Uh, probably if I see, I start identifying in the algorithm that most of my students are failing the use of commas or the use of punctuation marks. There's something they have to do because probably if it is one or two cases, okay, I can spot something. But if it is a larger trend, um, it is a highlight and it's also feedback for the teacher. Probably I am not tackling or I am not spotting or I am not delivering information as thoroughly as I should. Uh, it also talks about decisions to improve our curriculum design. And as an educator, I cannot conceive a curriculum that does not include technology at some point. And when I talk about technology, that at some point reflects upon the use of ChatGPT as such. Uh, instruction. How to give instructions to students if we know or our fear is that they go to chat GPT. So we need to educate them. On, on, okay, go. But go before the class, not, not as a as, uh, shortcut for, for learning, just pretty much as constructing like uh, uh, something that we might call flip learning. Anticipate everything through chat GPT and then we come and discuss. And assessment, as I said before, um, chat GPT and all those artificial intelligence tools are great resources for assessment if we know how to use them and also for for content creation which is something i'll i'll show you in a minute uh, intelligent assessment systems powered by artificial intelligence can automate grading yep we can do that with the correct or with the right input provide immediate feedback to students. And this is something we struggle with. You know, we have a classroom in Colombia, we have some classrooms that are 40, uh, uh, 40 people in a classroom, for students. And we, need, we want to tell every individual very specific aspects of their learning processes. And we say, no, I can't because that's time consuming. Mm -hmm. If you give them the right uh, path on artificial intelligences, 
It's not that you are going to totally neglect the feedback and the artificial intelligence is going to give them feedback. No, you ask them to go for their feedback and share it with you or share it with their peers to find similarities. And then you come as a teacher and start spotting very important needs or, or like common trends, as I said before. Um, they can track their progress and make the necessary improvements. This is incredibly necessary. Um, it is not like, and then again, it depends on the perspective the teacher has. For one thing, I can relax a little bit, chill, and ask the artificial intelligence to do everything for my students. And that happens, and uh, I've seen that happen. Uh, that's not the situation. I can do that, but always understanding what my role as an educator is. And so at some point, you know, getting to know what the feedback given by the artificial intelligence system is and adapting that to my classroom, to my students' needs so uh, they can improve uh, and they can track like much more of, of their specifics on what they need. Uh, this is also connected to what I have previously mentioned and is that Artificial intelligence can facilitate adaptive learning. And, you know, our contents are or must be active and dynamic, but importantly, adjusted to individual needs and learning styles. Uh, uh, at the very beginning, when I was talking about the different types of artificial intelligences and machine learning and the expert systems and the computer thing and uh, the visuals, it's because every artificial intelligence can fit into our students' needs. If I am more visual, I am more tactile, I am more into you know seeing things or imitating, etc. Uh, we need to know. We need to to totally understand how this goes, and and, and get to to reflect upon um, everything we have tried so far regarding technology. I want to stop here and I uh, go back to, I want you to go back to the Mentimeter. Uh, uh, if you're already there, if not, um, I might need to go back to the slide where the QR code is. And I have a second question. How would you integrate artificial, artificial intelligences in your classroom? I'm just giving you some hints on, on how to do it with feedback, et cetera. But I would like to know how you feel integrating uh, this. I'm sorry, I'm going to go back to the to the QR code. I should have put it a bit much more consecutively, but uh, uh, the end, I was just expecting not to have this this much. I'm going to show it in a couple of minutes. Um, as you think of like ways on articulating artificial intelligence in your classroom, I want to talk about some ethical considerations, including uh, data privacy. I want to give a very specific example of, uh, of an application that many people use and is TikTok. TikTok is developed by a Russian developer. And you know the policies in Russia, in Russia are different than the policies in America. Usually Russian people have more access to or they can have access to technology and to devices etc so it has no restrictions when you install TikTok, when you uh, many, many people do not read the terms and conditions they agree on access full access to their devices so say, yeah you can like totally explore my cell phone and you can totally go for uh, my photos my my uh, chats etc so we don't know how to work on that privacy and artificial intelligences do that, the, the, the algorithms do that. If we are not well educated, we can uh, give access to something we might not want. There's a door that we might not want to open. There's another thing that is the algorithm, uh, algorithmic bias. And then again, quoting Mr. Caicedo's in previous presentation uh, experiences, he talked about the, the kilo of uh, feathers and kilos. I, I think he was giving an example with weight, and that's an algorithm 
uh, algorithmic bias, like probably you, the, 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 the chatbot understands instruction, but relies on mistakes. Transparency and accountability, because probably, and it has happened, I, there's a case in which a person paid for the premium version of ChatGPT and asked it uh, to create or to come up with the master's thesis. And the craziest thing of this example is that it went through Turnitin. Turnitin didn't spot anything. So it was totally clean. And uh, it has to do with ethics and how we are teaching our students to use artificial intelligence, but not to, to use it as a shortcut then again, but just as a complementary tool for their education. And I have to quote myself again, we're dealing with people. We are not, uh, not only are we dealing with the, uh, language learners, but also with functional human beings. And we need to equip them or we want to equip them uh, with values. Uh, technologies can support personalized learning pathways, recommend sources, which is something amazing, activities and instructional strategies that are based on unique profiles. Um, this happens because we need to, at some point, understand that artificial intelligence has the capacity to control and, and to to take a different, to give a different perspective to our students' productions. Uh, we, but for starters, we are all biased by something, even machines. But probably having two or three perspectives are going to help us. Now, those perspectives are going to help us give you much more specific feedback based on unique learning profiles. This is fundamental to do. Then this is the, the, the code again. How would you integrate uh, 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 artificial intelligence into your classroom? I don't know if the Mentimeter is working properly so far because I, I just left it open for the first question but then again if you want to go over the questions I would just leave it open once the presentation is finished because of our uh, time constraints even though uh, I can already see um, how you're working with like the first you know um, a, a word cloud that we, we've come up with so in here I have an example in Spanish on how uh, ChatGPT assessed one thing, and I say, I gave them the instruction, please assess this or evaluate this text, the text. And even if you don't speak Spanish, you have here something that says in general. So it gives a very general evaluation of the text. And it spots very specific characteristics, really nice, something that can be improved, etc. But I want you to check the prompt, assess or evaluate this text. That was pretty much about it. I didn't tell ChatGPT to do anything else. I'm going to give you a different example. I gave a text based on, uh, actually, I, I had it correct my, my spelling and grammar with, with this presentation. And it says uh, the text is well written, demonstrates a good command of grammar, spelling, and very lazy range, because that was what I was asking for. But I asked ChatGPT using, using bullet points evaluate grammar spelling and lexical range and it says uh, the sentences are grammatically correct and the verb tenses are appropriately used when it talks about spelling the text is free from spelling errors lexical range vocabulary use is appropriate and demonstrates a good range of terms related to artificial intelligence in education it includes terms such as integration technologies techniques etc so you see it uh, the cluster, all of the information goes very specific. Overall, the text, overall, the text is uh, well written, free from grammar and spelling errors, and effectively utilizes a uh, range of vocabulary. My suggestion and something I did with my students was like I had the four aspects evaluated for the IELTS uh, test, which uh, lexical range, accuracy, accuracy, sorry, accuracy. Uh, task uh, completion, I guess, and vocabulary, and, and punctuation, and then 
uh, my students would go and, ev and get the evaluation from ChatGPT. They would print the page and they would show it to me and I'll see how it goes. And I'll just check and give them feedback and give them very specific pieces of recommendations one by one. So I guess it is all about the way you present the instruction. But I guess at some point, or at this point, you might be overwhelmed with ChatGPT. So I'm going to give you another piece of um, artificial intelligence that we can use. Uh, this is uh, from a, another page from, uh, you know, you give the, 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 te the page the instruction and it gives you a very specific illustration based on what you type. I would say an English teacher in a classroom. And then you have this. Two illustrations. I can go through advanced settings and be more specific. Uh, but pretty much that was what I did with my first example. You can actually go Google uh, artificial intelligence illustrations. And you can click on the first prompt. And then you have this page. And you start by checking. Uh, you give it a try. So far, so good. You say, OK, what's the new thing about this? I did something different, providing an example with more specific input. And I say, an elementary English teacher with 10 students in a classroom explaining present continuous. And you have the two images. And actually, you can use this with very specific prompts to start creating your own material. And your students can give feedback on those pieces of material you're showing. So uh, you can recreate any situation based on the communicative function that you are using for a specific class. You go, I don't know, I would say, and let me see if I can show you the example. I don't know, it's GeneCraft. I, I was trying to, uh, during the, the preparation for this presentation, I was trying a different uh, instruction that was an elementary English teacher with students in a classroom that I can use to explain, to explain present continuous. And as you can see, we have two different illustrations, etc. When you come here to advanced settings, uh, you can check how it works, anime, all painting, watercolor, abstract, etc. So you can show your students different types of images that you can include in your presentations or you can include as part of your classes to go beyond books, you know, you don't have to stick to the, the illustration from the book, but you create, you give the prompt and GeneCraft, which is one uh, artificial intelligence uh, tool to generate images, would give you a very specific detail of what you are looking for. And this is something that we can use, but as we have said before, the most important thing is the input. And then this is when it gets really interesting because you can get feedback from your students and you can ask them whether they liked it or not, if, if they feel if they felt comfortable using this. If uh, I remember once a student told me that would be creepy, uh, the style of picture was uh, like freaked him out. So I decided to change to anime or to 3D animations, etc. So um, it constructs uh, your classroom. It's pretty much like you, you are not dependent on this photos taken from an English uh, textbook, but you can also create your own. Well, not create your own, but at least give the, uh, the artificial intelligence to the instructions so you come up with these very specific pictures. And the more specific, the more surprised you would be. I mean, like, uh, explaining uh, present perfect, which is one of the most difficult topics to understand for a Spanish speaker, and it gives you the images. And you can work from that and start creating contrast, etc. I mean, like using a learning strategy, which is imagery, you can start working on this, ex exploiting uh, the picture, etc. Uh, graphic or uh, picture exploitation, etc. It works really well. That was why I was telling you that, of course, I understand the perks of using ChatGPT, but we need to move beyond ChatGPT because that is not the only artificial intelligence tool that we have for feedback, for assessment, for material creation, for curriculum adaptation, there are some others. Uh, I have another one here on, on, on my browser that is Audibot, that it's crazy because uh, you can start speaking, uh, you choose the language, 
you choose the kind of voice you want to go for and then uh, you record something or you can create materials that are that can be used instead of those listenings from uh, different pages so you can create your own using artificial intelligence and and it helps you you know like turn up your voice it's probably my case uh, uh, i do have an accent because i am a, a colombian uh person who speaks english i do have an accent if you want to minimize the accent and make it more american more whatever oriented uh, the artificial intelligence tool is going to help you do that uh but then again and i insist i don't see this as my rival i see this as a complementary uh, tool for my teaching practices yeah I, I guess it depends on the perspective on how you see this now we're going to connect evolution assessment and feedback through artificial intelligence this is uh we're starting like the last third of the presentation uh artificial intelligence is kind of automate and streamline the evaluation and assessment process because they analyze large amounts of data and they provide efficient and objective results i have said that before and i have studied that before now the situation is how would you put that into practice um, there are some lms's for evaluation that they get they give you spreadsheets on results and uh, for a fact, I know one of the tools that uses artificial intelligences uh, analyzes Excel uh, spreadsheets. I mean, you Google it and just uh, Excel analysis, artificial intelligence, and you can get through it. Uh, I do not suggest uh, a person do that solidly unless the person uh, gets certain basic knowledge using Microsoft Excel or spreadsheets because then you know the analysis is going to be a bit of a hassle. If you are not familiar, just keep, st stick to the LMS uh, results. But if you are more into Excel and you know how to use it, go for artificial intelligence for analysis. Uh, I guess one of the most interesting things is that we can tailor questions that are connected to individual individual needs and abilities. Um, once you give the prompt, once you analyze the feedback, and once you, you, you use artificial intelligence, you are um, you teachers or we teachers are going to be able to tailor questions and to adapt the different materials we are giving our students. And it is incredible because it works at any level we can we're talking about elementary middle school high school university level you tailor the questions or the tasks based on their needs after you have analyzed this and and then again i'm saying this sounds easy but it requires uh hard work but you know that's what the, the uh, teaching profession is about working hard uh NLP, then again, natural language process enable, enables the system to analyze written responses and provide automated feedback on essays, assignments, and open-ended questions. Uh, probably you have seen that. But then again, uh, my, my suggestion or my piece of advice is to find a very specific prompt when you're asking ChatGPT to totally analyze that piece of text. Like, if you want to go for grammar, vocabulary, punctuation, be as specific as possible. Uh, so the artificial intelligence tool gives you what you want, the result you want. Uh, then again, same situation if you're talking about creating pictures. Same situation. Actually, you can ask your students to create pictures and bring them and see which one is the more detailed. You tell them, I want you to create or to, to come with a very specific artificial intelligence created image of a zoo. So a person can type, create a zoo. But another one can create a zoo, including certain animals, a uh, certain location, etc. So the more specific, the more uh, complete the picture is going to be. Then again, that's about very specific algorithm. 
Uh, speaking of algorithms, uh, the can in the detection of plagiarism and academic misconduct. This is something uh, expert systems are working on. Because as I said before, Turnitin still has issues spotting whether it's being a, a plagiarism or something. There are some pages that are very careful, artificial intelligence pages that are very careful with the content they deliver. Sadly, not all of them. So uh, at some point, and I don't want to say this the wrong way, but we need to trust our students whenever they come with an essay that is very well elaborated, etc. Now, my lifesaver for that is that I have always structured the process of writing. So when I when I talk about the structure of the process is that I have them complete an outline, etc., step by step, always handwritten that I see the process has been done in handwriting. And after that, I receive the, the, the um, digital version of the text. But I need to understand it is a process, not out of the blue. This student has never shown up, just comes with a very well-elaborated text. And, and pretty much it, it's about the integrity of these assessment processes, the, the ones that we struggle with. Uh, Machine learning, as I said before, the way machines learn, the algorithm can analyze students' performance data to identify patterns, trends, and areas where additional support or intervention may be needed. And I, I'm, probably you might have noticed the more feedback or the more you interact with ChatGPT, the more elaborated it gets. The more prompts you give to pictures, the more elaborated they get. That's part of uh, machine learning. The more you give, the more it receives, and the more elaboration it makes. At some point, uh, this is something positive and something really nice of, of working with technology, even though we might feel a little bit freaked out or frustrated, or you know. Uh, I think it, uh, artificial intelligence can facilitate formative assessments, providing real-time feedback, which is amazing. But they need instructions and they need guidance. I remember. Uh, once I was discussing like the role of the teacher in the classroom. Now, because we monitor and we guide, etc., but we also uh, create connections and the rapport that we create with our students is gonna help us understand that it is not part of the feedback the machine gives, but also our feedback in terms of behavior, that's something the machine will never assess. And, and performance in class and interaction with your students and how uh, the level of empathy and, and and how we get along with our communities. Uh, because, you know, artificial intelligence is get the plain thing, but we get the human part. And this is something that we will never forget about. And finally, uh, the, you know, make, uh, it helps educators make uh, data informed decisions about curriculum design, instructional strategies, and the individualized interventions. I am going over the same situation. Yeah, I'm going on the same situation over and over again because I want to highlight this is important. The more we give, the better our students will be uh, receiving our pieces of advices and, and recommendations and suggestions because learning is stopped being a one-on-one -on -one process. Now it's a community process. And then artificial intelligence has become one of the main actors nowadays. So we need to be ready and prepared. Artificial intelligences can also support development of adaptive system, uh, sorry, adaptive systems that adjust the difficulty and content, and content of assessments. Um, this is something that we've been working on. It's been kind of hard, that is, for the different levels that we have in a classroom. Probably you have a basic level, A1 level, but not everyone has the same uh, background, et cetera. There are some people who are more knowledgeable. There are some more people who are higher, et cetera. So uh, we can create material and we can provide feedback, ensuring that it fits the level and the challenges that the level entails. So this is something that we, need to be very aware of. 
the development of adaptive assessment systems. Uh, I'm going again to Mentimeter, but I then again, I'm going to open the questions by the end of the presentation. So you do have more time to go explore, etc., discuss, check the answers. Now, uh, because I, uh, one of the objectives, we're talking about the challenges of exploring this. The first one is understanding and familiarity with artificial intelligence. And I have been lucky for I enjoy exploring technology, but not everybody finds it easy or finds it um, at some point relevant for the practices. So we need to start training our teachers on integrating as part of teaching methodologies. They need to invest time learning about artificial intelligence like it or not, because this is uh, our present slash future. So we need to understand what artificial intelligence means and everything we need to be familiarized with these concepts and with tools, of course. It requires training and professional development. So educators might require training and professional development opportunities. So if you are an administrator, start thinking on how to train your, your, your uh, faculty and staff on artificial intelligence. If you are a teacher, start creating community groups with your fellow teachers or co-workers so you start providing tools, strategies, activities, etc. Everything you can gather from this TESOL convention or from other conventions. Uh, so you can replicate these successful practices in your classrooms. You need to stay updated with trends, tools, platforms, etc. To make the most out of artificial intelligence in your classroom. This is something we cannot uh, prevent from happening. This is something we need to face. And as I have said before, you have two options. Either it is your enemy and, uh, and that's one sort of menace for your job, or this is something that if you master, can be part of your life and you can just uh, find it as, a, uh, as an alternative tool. But you know how to use it. So it depends on you, like how well trained and developed you are in the use of artificial intelligences. The integration with the curriculum, as I said at the very beginning, I cannot conceive a curriculum or a set of curricula that does not include technology and also does not include artificial intelligence as part of the curriculum. But everybody's, I mean, in Colombia, we have some people starting with ChatGPT. So we need to start integrating that and uh, see how it enhances support, enhances and supports educational goals, outcomes, etc. At some point during the curriculum, we need to ask our students to create text through ChatGPT, giving the, the, the input, so they, they have a text on, on as a model for them to check punctuation, grammar, vocabulary. But we need to know how to walk them through. Uh, we also need to talk about students' engagement and adaptability, because actually adaptability, because probably it's something that we have seen is that our students become, and I don't want to say the word, but I might have to say it, lazy and they rely on artificial intelligence then again i go back to the part in which i was explaining what we the, the, the skills they need to be fostered about and they need to be presented uh and one of them is soft skills responsibility accountability you cannot prevent your students from using artificial intelligence what you can do is teach them how to use it responsibly and how to be accountable for what they do and uh, being diverse receiving and getting feedback and receiving and getting uh, uh, experiences perspectives etc our students are basically digital natives so they know how to use this but probably they don't know how to use it properly so this is when we need to start, as educators, we need to start training them on, on these skills, soft skills, pretty much. And uh, that's about it. Uh, I want to say thanks. And, you know, on behalf of the university, Universidad de Alexia, I want to say thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, Professor uh, Madrigal for the opportunity. It's been a really nice experience being here again. I don't know if we have a space for questions or if I just uh, simply finish sharing my presentation. We have um, space, um, a 10 minute question and answer session. 
So um, you can write your questions via the chat and please try to ask your questions as concisely as possible. So we already have some questions, so I'm going to be reading to you. Great. Okay, so we have Sergio asking, what are some copyright issues we should be careful with when working with artificial intelligence? That's a challenge because uh, the problem of artificial intelligence is that it takes well, it takes a, a big uh, database and corpus, so they might override copyright. That's why we need to train our students on how to create their own content. And the important thing is the input they give, like something that that the input tries not to imitate or replicate things that have have already been done, because we need to to value the work of others. And that is part of the soft skills we, we are training our students on. Uh, plagiarism, pretty much. Like, you don't want to copy and paste from ChatGPT. And that at some point, if we are not, if we don't train our students properly, it might happen. Like, the issues of copywriting, plagiarism, uh, they will not take responsibility for what they do. I would say there are many issues regarding copyright the situation is how we as educators tackle those issues and make the most out of concepts like responsibility, accountability, um, ethics, etc. But yeah, definitely there are a like, great deal of Thank you. I think that's the clue, right? To teach them how to deal with it because it's there. Precisely. Okay. Yeah. We have another question. And it's related to providing feedback using artificial in intelligence. So can you expand a little bit more on how to provide immediate feedback to students? Uh, sure. There are a couple of situations that you can do. The, the tool that everybody's using that is ChatGPT provides immediate feedback. Because, you know, you type in the text and it gives you the answer immediately. But whenever you want to use a tool such as Audibot, the feedback is immediate in the sense that you you record your voice and you listen to yourself and you can go through uh, an analysis tool like you know pronunciation, vocabulary, etc. But when we talk about immediate feedback, is that they receive they they put the input on the chat box and immediately they get the results. That was why I was saying train your students properly on how to prompt what they say or what they type in. Uh, the chat box because I want to evaluate this. I want you to evaluate this text based on grammar, vocabulary, lexical um, accuracy, etc. So, it uh, and the, the important thing, and I guess in my opinion, something that works really well is using bullet points. If you give the word, the keyword, bullet points on the instruction for ChatGPT, it will just totally uh, structure the feedback in a way that the student gets very specifics. And then it share, the student has to share that with you so you validate uh, whatever the chat box is saying. It's not a, a matter of like artificial intelligence doing all the job. Great. So I guess the clue is in the prompt, right? How specific you do it. Yeah. And a piece of advice is use bullet points. Like, given, uh, given this using bullet points and you would structure in a much more organized way. Great. Uh, we have another comment from Rosa. How is that site called? Um, the one you were—I think you were—you were the one you using for illustrating. Uh, GeneCraft, G-E-N-C-R-A-F-T, GeneCraft, like generator craft. Okay. And and uh, actually, what you can do is in a very easy way you can Google. Um, let me see if I remember how to do that. I like think you said visual intelligence. Illustrations uh, or, or illustrations. images. Yeah, and then uh, the first the first prompt that you're gonna have is uh, GeneCraft. Okay. Then another one is is Audiobot for free? There's a uh, the very basic version is for free. Yeah, you can do certain things, but of course you have to pay if you want some other uh, features. Yeah. Okay. But the basics, well, it's for free. Then here is Claire, um, and this is regarding the comment you said that you like to have really, I mean, that you 
that you make sure students are really writing what they are producing, right, in a composition or writing class. But what about virtual classes? How would you deal with that? Uh, there are some tools that you can use. Actually, you can use Padlet or you can use, uh, there are some tools for students to do simultaneous writing. Mm -hmm. And they type in, like, the, the, the important part is that you don't ask for the, the complete piece of work finished, but you go step by step. So, for example, okay, okay, today we're going to work on the introduction. So give me a thesis statement. And you walk them through the thesis statement so you get to know that that's actually their, their, uh, their creation. I guess it has to do with how much you're asking your students out of the blue. If you go for one sentence, they are going to do it. Of course, using some help if it is online. But you want to make sure that uh, it is well structured so they don't rely on technology, but they rely on what they know and what you have taught. Yeah, I would say uh, Padlet is one. Uh, there is one by Google that I don't remember right now. They use, do you use stick notes, like uh, sticky notes? Oh, I don't remember the name now. But yeah, there's there's there are some tools that you can use for um, for uh, step by step like writing processes. Um, positively, sure. Just let me check. And then going me, on the sure. same line, what about, for example, you're still in a virtual environment and you're asking for uh, an assignment, right? So how would you deal with that? I did something once because I, I was not sure about these students creating their own. So what what they what I did was asking them to hand write the text and take a picture, scan it, scan the pictures uh, okay. of, of handwritten texts. But if you want to go that far, the the, the, the tool I was thinking of um, developed by Google is uh, Jamboard. When you use Jamboard, you can get like little pieces of information step by step. You create the text. Yeah. Okay, and there's Angie's comment. It says, so in order to use it as an evaluation tool, we need to program it. How long could it take for a beginner tech teacher to make an evaluation rubric like those? Um, if, uh, if you want a blunt answer, I would say it takes forever. No, but like, no, no, in order to motivate fellow teachers, it is trial and error. I mean, you can try several times until you find a prompt that fits your needs. Because as I said in the examples at the very beginning, is, uh, evaluate this, and then it gives general evaluation. But if you want to be more specific, you need to give yourself certain time to know what is that you want to specifically assess. And then you start giving very specific prompts. I want to check grammar, specifically the use of present perfect. And I want to use punctuation, specifically the use of commas, etc. So it would take a solid semester um, my case took me a semester to get really into what I wanted. But then again, uh, it's try and error. And when I finally obtained what I wanted, it saved me a lot of time. But yeah, it requires, it depends on the group, it depends on your expectations on what you want to really specifically assess. But uh, it takes some time. I, I, I'm not going to lie. It's not like it happens out of the blue in the morning that you wake up very clear and you say, this is the instruction. No, we have to go. Because as, as we have seen, uh, chat books have memory, so they adapt to, to your needs, but they require a little bit, a little bit more help in the, in the form of very specific input. Yep. Once I heard that in artificial intelligence is like meeting someone. You get to ask questions and then you get, oh, this is how it goes and you start chatting with it. Yeah, precisely, yeah. Okay, and we have when we have another question, and it says, "Are there tutorials available?" Yeah, definitely. You can go to YouTube, and and you can uh, on on the one hand, YouTube is a very good source of tutorials, but also the very specific pages have uh like uh, tours, guided tours on how to create audios, on how to create pictures, etc. Uh, there's some that's something people don't usually do, but if you you can go on and like explore or browse through the, the website or, or the application on the phone and it has they, they usually have tutorials on how to go step by step and, and they teach you how to be more specific on the prompts or the instruction instructions you're given uh, artificial intelligence yeah definitely so i think there are no more questions right 
Okay, so, well, thank you very much. Uh, it was such a pleasure to be here in your presentation. Um, and thanks for the insights into this important topic. So we don't get to see it as an enemy, but as a tool that we can use in class. Yeah, I want to just close this presentation on the one hand. Uh, I want to thank uh, Acme Tissel and on behalf of that, uh, Professor Madrigal for the opportunity because it was it has been a really great experience. And I want to conclude with that specifically, like artificial intelligences are not going to take our jobs as long as we know how to deal with them and we step ahead, you know, like we, we are the ones who rule our classrooms. Mm -hmm. And that's something what we need to empower our fellow colleagues with, something like that expression, empower ourselves in front of technology. Thank you very much. Thank you.